Yep, Apple has done it. Their stupid decisions has led to bad phone security for all. Now the state players have found a way to break encryption and all because Apple decided it wanted to integrate spy AI technology into iOS. I guess it won't be long before Google is forced into this as well. What am I talking about folks? I'm talking about a technology that Apple introduced a year ago called client-side scanning and governments have latched onto this concept. And here we are a year later. This will hound us forever. It should bring mistrust in any phone operating system that is not open source. I made a video about client-side scanning and YouTube decided to demonetize it. So maybe you didn't see it or maybe you're too much of an Apple fan to see the problem. Stay right there if you want to learn about how this AI technology can be misused. I'm on the platform odyssey.com. I'm now one of the top creators on there. Just for insurance, in case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. My company offers a VPN service, Bytes VPN, de-googled phones, VPN routers, and now we offer a Braxmail email service. These products are made to protect you against big tech and their tricks to profile and track us. If you're interested in them, they are on my app Braxme. The link is in the description. Since YouTube demonetized my video from last year, perhaps not many of you saw it, but let me explain what Apple decided to add to iOS. At the moment, this is a specific iOS feature and I'm sure glad I don't actively use iOS. I do have iOS devices, but they're not daily drivers so they don't have any personal data and they're usually left off. The feature that was added to iOS, as I mentioned, is called client-side scanning. Basically, this is an AI technology built into the phone that allows for Apple to search for content on your phone and to alert Apple HQ to the presence of any particular content that is on their banned list. The stated reason for adding this dangerous feature is that Apple was promoting themselves as an activist organization concerned about child safety. So they supposedly built this technology to be used to spot people that have illegal image content called CSAM. Now, I'm not going to define what CSAM is because that probably caused me to be demonetized. So you will have guessed nothing stops this technology from spotting any content. Any. However, many are so enamored with Apple's supposed focus on privacy that the fans did not show concern. Nowadays, a lot of our content on the internet uses HTTPS, which encrypts data on transport through the internet. Also, many people use encrypted messaging apps that prevent data interception. This, of course, has perturbed the intelligent agencies in the various countries, particularly the Five Eyes, US, UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, because encryption prevents them from surveilling their population. Apparently, Apple had the same concern. They wanted to see what's on your phone. I'm curious what the actual reasoning was to build this. I don't believe for a moment that this was something made for a narrow objective like CSAM. It's too wide reaching for that. Let me first explain how this technology works and how Apple fashioned it in a way that makes a spy technology appear to be benign. Apple came up with a way of surveilling the contents of a phone without actually looking at what's in the phone. Apple uses AI to judge the content on your phone. So the phone gets some instructions from HQ that certain content gets flagged. Your phone AI then scans the content on your phone to see if it matches the criteria given and then it reports the results to HQ if there's a match. Since no actual person reviews the phone content specifically, then the assumption is that this is a safe way of monitoring. The actual technology works like this. The CPU on Apple phones are now at the desktop performance level, so they can actually perform AI functions without relying on a central computer in the cloud. What the AI is supposed to search for is communicated via a mathematical construct called a hash. And a computer content that is unique can be represented by a numeric value, which in this case is a computed hash. What is special about using hashes is that a hash cannot be reverse engineered to regenerate the original content. 
But if two separate providers of the data compare hashes and the hashes match, then for all intents and purposes, the two objects being compared are the same. No one in the middle knows what's being compared. This is the exact logic used in password management. Modern apps are not supposed to store the actual passwords, just the hash. So if you send a password to an app, the hash of the password is compared to the hash stored in the app database. And if both match, then the passwords match. This makes these processes immune to interception since no one sees passwords. In the case of Apple, they say they have a database of known illegal content. Then using the AI at HQ, they recognize characteristics of this content to derive some signature. That signature is then hashed and passed to all iPhones. So the instructions can never be examined by any third party since they're just hashes. The secret is how the iPhone AI recreates the signature of any content and generates this hash, since it is obviously identical to how it is done at Apple HQ. Again, this is all hush hush and secret iOS, of course, is a closed source operating system, so we would never know. The issue, though, is that any content can be scanned by Apple. All that has to happen is to have the content classified at HQ so that a hash instruction can be generated. And all iPhones will examine their content based on these hashed instructions and report to HQ if there's a match. The AI on the phone does not know what the criminal behavior is. The AI cannot distinguish between an invasion of privacy or illegality. Neither can it judge context beyond what it is taught to recognize. So by design, there really is nothing in Apple's client-side scanning that can be monitored for abuse or monitored that is being used outside of the claimed objectives of scanning for illegal images. Now, the naysayer Apple fans, of course, will say, I got this all wrong. In fact, I saw some of the commentaries on Reddit, which just goes to show that whoever's loudest gets accepted as the one telling the truth. The logic that this technology cannot be abused is based on the premise that the only content that can be identified are those that are an exact match of what is in Apple's possession. They say that the hash is a straight hash of an actual JPEG file, for example, and thus it cannot be abused to scan for private content. In theory, Apple collects the illegal content from government sources and then it can only do a hash match if the images are identical. Now, the reason I don't buy this is that using a straight hash comparison would make this functionality pretty much useless. It will return very few matches. The way a hash works, images, if that's what's being compared, must be binary identical. There can't be any differences. So a resize, a crop, a color change, even putting in an invisible dot in a corner would make the image different. It will generate a different hash. If Apple's technology is based on just a straight hash, then I've got nothing to worry about since it will fail. Even when images are uploaded to social media and downloaded afterwards, the hash will change because these platforms modify the header of the image and regularly resize images to save on space. I don't think Apple is that dumb. I think Apple's way of scanning for content is based on AI rules. AI can recognize specific objects and images. In fact, this is commonly used on a Tesla. If you look at a Tesla, it will identify and map objects and classify them. It will identify adult people, children, dogs, garbage cans, traffic cones, cars, pickup trucks, vans, semis, and so on. So it is not particularly unusual to do this now. You train the AI to recognize objects. For example, you can train the AI to recognize people by age and gender. You can also train the AI to recognize clothing or absence thereof. I had a video demonstrating this last year. So if I were Apple, I would definitely not base my client size scanning on just binary hashes of particular images. I would use the AI to classify the images. Then I would hash the classifications. I could still hash portions of the image as well to make sure there's an identical match, like a facial recognition profile. Who among you would like to venture a guess if Apple's technology is advanced as I say? Leave a comment below and let's see. Now let me expand the story. Enter the various state agencies, particularly those with three letters. They just love this idea. The idea is to spot the content on the phone before it gets encrypted. They've been discussing this for years. They wanted a technology that can be used 
before encryption occurs. Encryption today is pretty much unbreakable, like AES-256, until quantum computers get into common use. State-level players have been very vocal about wanting this kind of access. They have talked about access via back doors that presumably only those agencies will know about or have control over. And any smart cybersecurity expert will know that if there's some backdoor, it will eventually be discovered and hacked. Well, it looks like Apple satisfied their needs. This pretty much operates like a backdoor to your phone content, but centrally controlled. This is a kind of backdoor that may be impossible to hack because it stays under Apple's control. Apple will of course publicly deny giving access to this kind of capability. The problem is that the genie is out of the bottle. The three-letter agencies know it is built in iOS. So now the next battle is either force Apple to allow access to this technology willingly or for government to create laws that force Apple to do this. This is something interesting to note. For many years, big tech has balked at providing any sort of backdoor to examine phone content because they claim it is technologically unfeasible to make such a technology safe from hackers. In fact, if you recall the story, Apple denied giving access to the passcode that a terrorist used in San Bernardino, California because they don't want to open the doors for three-letter agencies or any federal agency to get access to the phone content in general. And that was a big fight, as you know from the press. You know, they said, nope, we will not give you access. The problem here now is that Apple has now proven it can be done today. And so they can't claim to governments that they can't do as they asked. The tech was created and now delivered. And now that Apple has done it, obviously there is no technological reason that Google couldn't be forced to create the same tech. It is not rocket science to do this. And of course, this is now not limited to the five eyes. Various governments want in as well. Governments like India and Indonesia to begin with. Why would any government not want this? For Apple, this could be a quiet thing. They could just agree to provide their spying services to the governments. As long as it is kept quiet, of course, for marketing reasons. Or the other approach is for Apple to fight this publicly and deny access to governments. Unfortunately, governments can pass laws requiring access. And this is now what the fear is because some governments are very adamant about being granted backdoors and such to beat encryption. So Apple is in a no-win situation here. We're going to get zucked. A country whose politicians do not understand the value of encryption is Australia. They definitely want access to people's data for surveillance. Australia appears to be number one in aggressiveness to achieve this breaking down of encryption. Never mind that without encryption, even normal business cannot occur due to hacking, banking transactions, or even corporate espionage, not counting privacy issues and not counting state-to-state -state espionage. Now let me extend this topic to future capabilities. The issue is that each modern phone now has enough CPU to do its own AI. Just like a Tesla has its own AI to observe the world, your phones with their closed source proprietary operating systems can be doing things beyond your understanding. If the AI can be given instructions to scan client files, what stops the AI from using the camera to scan the environment? What stops the AI from using the microphone to scan the sonic landscape and do things like voice print recognition? This is a very interesting future for sure. If the brains are left at the device, then there is very little network traffic. Only positive signals need to be sent over the network. So surveillance can be extremely hush-hush. Example, suppose the AI is trained to recognize a face. Yeah, yeah, the instruction can be sent as a hash, etc., etc., as we already described earlier. Now, is there any technological reason that prevents the AI from recognizing files on the phone to switching to using the camera? Well, of course not. Tesla can do it, and of course, Apple can do it. The AI just analyzes images. By the way, that's exactly how a Tesla works too. It actually analyzes frame by frame captured, which is no different than analyzing individual images. And this is the scary world of the future, where your phones are used by the AI and instructions are given either by the OS phone manufacturer like Apple or Google and possibly at the behest of some government. 
And maybe to give a semblance of legality, this kind of mass surveillance will be justified by broad warrants searching for events and people. In fact, in theory, this can already be done on Teslas today. The only reason this would fail is that an internet connection may not be available on a Tesla. The car is made to function without a constant connection to home base. And this raises similar questions on capabilities on Ring cameras from Amazon. However, in the case of Ring, the videos are stored on central servers on Amazon so they can do surveillance offline. But again, to make this unique for the phone, phones are ultra portable and can go into places that a car or ring camera can't see. Phones are a constant companion. And with the AI instructions already in existence, let's just say the groundwork is already in place. And the big benefit of a client-side AI doing surveillance is that there is minimal network traffic. Again, only positive results need to be sent back to HQ. I'm actually surprised that Apple would even admit to doing client-side scanning. Did they think this would be a positive PR move to show that by cracking down on illegal images that they're a responsible corporate citizen? Maybe. Or maybe it is to announce to governments that surveillance capability at client side is open for business at the right price. Or maybe it is a shot across the bow to those trafficking in illegal images by saying, go to Google instead. We don't want you on Apple's ecosystem. Whatever the reasoning, given this threat and the fact that Apple could easily migrate to AI scanning the environment easily through the camera, I would avoid using an iOS phone at all costs. And maybe Google will be smarter by implementing this kind of capability quietly so no one has to know. In which case, Google Android users could be victimized and not even know it. This is why the future looks bright for open source phone operating systems. This is why Android Open Source Project, or AOSP, which is the basis of the Google phones and Linux phones, are the best and safest options. These operating systems cannot possibly hide client-side scanning. If it exists, we will see it in the source code. So make your phone purchase decisions with care. It is really important for all of you to speak up. The reason Apple is able to implement this kind of surveillance infrastructure is that the people accept it. Yes, they can confuse the message and hire the best PR people and lawyers to obscure the truth. Yes, the biggest corporation on earth has the power to convince you of anything with their advertising budget. This is why it is so dangerous to trust big tech. You don't know what their objectives are. The average person thinks big tech does things for your satisfaction. Nope. The biggest corporation on earth exists to make money, lots of it, through whatever means possible. Stay sharp, people. Be always aware. Things are not always what they appear to be. See you next time. Mm -hmm.